Hello and welcome to Lynn Grusen, uh, Designs and I've got another new template product in store today which is Messy Pockets Gridded number two and I just want to give you some ideas for how to use them. I actually use them to scrap a trip to Australia which we did which is where my uh, husband's parents, uh, well all of his family actually live now and uh, we also added on a trip to the beach and this is uh, as you can see on this one I've used a big photo for the underneath uh, and then a smaller photo of a spider on this clipped part up here this is my daughter at a, a, a very <laughs> an age inappropriate as in too young theme park but we had a laugh and this is her at the beach and I can see on these two blended photos how I've blended the pool photo into the blue background and again up here you can see I've blended the tree photo using blend modes into that background painted layer and on this one again I've done the same the painted layer I turned into a sort of very gray purplishy gray and then I blended the houseboats picture into that so I'm just going to have a look at this layout here, which is when we moved on to Melbourne, which is where my husband's family lives. And we had a great time on the trams, taking photos of the trams, practicing taking photos of trams moving at speed, which was lots of fun. So here is the page without the blended photos. And one of the photos was the vintage City Circle tram, which, as you can see, was... a uh, my husband was saying, get on the tram, get on the tram. I didn't have time to change my settings. It was very overexposed. So a quick tip for this is duplicate the layer. Actually, I'm going to sharpen it first, just going to filter sharpen, smart sharpen. Sometimes it takes a bit of a while if it's a large file like this, but it's worth it. And then, once I've done that, I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to put it on multiply, blend mode multiply and there you go instantly it's much better exposure but it's a little bit too mm, bright so I'm just going to reduce the saturation on that multiplied layer and maybe just lower the opacity of it a bit as well and then merge those two layers together and that's a much more usable photo. Now I want to drag it to use it on the spot beside the picture of them on the vintage tram so I'm just going to make sure that that layer is the one that's highlighted drag it on and then use the corner handles up here while holding down shift to resize it. If you don't hold down shift what you're going to end up is a photo that is distorted Whereas if you hold down shift, the proportions stay the same. I'm just going to try and get it to match where I had it on the one that I made before, but I won't worry too much. It looks about right. And then I'm going to merge it down, clip it with that photo mask layer on the... And I can still move it around once it's clipped, as you can see. But once I'm happy, I'm going to merge it down. You go and I'm going to have a play around with blend modes and I actually the one I decided I liked is a color burn. I don't usually use pattern paper on these layers I tend to just use white background or just a pale color for the sort of painted background thing because it's just how I like my photo books but with this pattern paper from the sometimes prickly pet I quite like the sort of squares and things that were on it already so I put it on colour burn mode, but I just thought it was a bit too, you couldn't see enough of the detail. So then I duplicated it, put it on multiply, and I'm just going to tweak the brightness and contrast a bit, just to see. And that way you've still got the blended feel, but you got, it's, it looks more of a sort of a, a proper photo. And then my trick is, to get a very very soft erasing brush and just erase around the sign of that top layer which is on multiply. Now 
what you can also do is if you wanted if you don't like that sort of line where the photo ends you could also use a soft brush to get rid of that but I just quite like the way the lines look on here so there you go so that's that one now I've got this other spot down here and I'm going to use this photo of this very modern tram in contrast so I'm just going to same thing make sure that layer is the active layer drag that photo on find my hand whoops I didn't mean to do that <laughs> dragged it over completely onto my example layer my one I baked earlier okay so find my corner handles hold down shift and just resize it and I had it quite small just take me a little while just to get it into the right spot And there you go. Now I quite like it like that. Um, I've upped the brightness and contrast. Um, so it, it pops a little bit more. Uh, I don't think I'd ever use a photo, well I re really use a photo without upping the brightness and contrast just a bit anyway for a photo book, but certainly not for a uh, a blended photo spot it really just makes it hold its own otherwise it just can look a bit sort of gray and murky against the sort of other things on the page and especially where you've got something with kind of painty edges so again I'm going to duplicate the layer but this time I'm going to put a color overlay on the top layer and I actually just got the green using the color picker I just got the green from the other tram and I put it on overlay mode which is nice, but it's a little bit too... I, I want to bring back some of the sort of purpley hues that were in the original. So I'm just going to do that trick again where I use a soft brush just to erase some of that top layer, the one that's got the colour overlay on it. And then I merge the two down. And I've got a sort of a photo with this kind of, yeah, kind of a colour popping in from the edge. And I actually want to up the saturation a bit, just again, so it kind of holds it over and pops a bit against the other things on the page. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the screen tool, just lighten up 